Welcome to the channel. Today we're talking about the Time War 78S and I have a lot of thoughts on this grinder. So let's dive in. This grinder represents one quarter of Time War's new sculptor line, which launched with one of the biggest Kickstarter campaigns I've ever seen. They almost raised seven million dollars for these grinders, you know, huge advertising campaigns, lots of coverage, tons of hype, and it just had a ton of buzz around it. The sculptor line comes in two sizes, 64 millimeter burrs and 78 millimeter burrs. And each one of those sizes is split into a normal version version and an S version for espresso. So you have the 6.4, 6.4S, the 7.8, and this one is the 7.8S, which is focused on espresso, but it's also billed as an all around grinder for pour over too. The 7.8S is set to sell for 650 bucks US, and I can tell you it absolutely delivers some fantastic coffee for the price, but I also had some experience with this grinder that Personally, it just made it a little bit less exciting. Now, features wise, this is a single dosing stepless grinder, which means you have infinite adjustability between the steps. It's got a 400 watt brushless motor, so plenty of power there, adjustable RPM. It's got this magnetic hopper cover up here, as well as a magnetic dosing cup. It's got this really cool fines cleaner attachment. And it's also got this cool fail safe feature built in. So if it detects higher resistance, like if a rock gets in with your coffee, it's just gonna stop, let you know, give you a warning beep and not continue to try and grind your coffee. One little feature that I really liked is it's also got this removable IEC style cable. So, you know, if you want a shorter cable or you need like an angled plug for your kitchen or whatever, you can easily swap that out on Amazon. That was something that I liked and you don't really see that too much on grinders like this. Now, the first thing that got me about this grinder when I kind of took it out, started using it was it's very solid, like heavy duty. It kind of gave me this plasticky vibe from the photos that I had seen of it, but the case is metal. It's very solid, heavy duty. Even the dosing cup, you know, it's very heavy. It's got this nice polished vibe to it. There are a couple little quirks with the actual design of it. The power button, it's not nearly as solid as the rest. Like it'll rock and it has this kind of almost like chintzy little feel to it. The variable RPM is right on the back of the grinder. So we'll talk about that shortly, but it, if you do want to adjust it, it's kind of a pain because you got to like turn the grinder around and to see what your setting is at, or, you know, peek around the back, that kind of thing. And this is very minor, but the actual color of white, you probably can't even see this on the video. It's just a little bit warmer than a lot of the other white appliances I would typically see. So just know that. Now, basics aside, let me talk to my burr people here for a minute. This grinder has a 78 millimeter burr, which is a non-standard size. And that's very important because it means you can't swap out that burr to something else later. You're kind locked into Time Wars size. The 78S comes with a typical flat bird type design, unlike the 78, which comes with a turbo or ghost style burr. The burrs are vertically mounted and there's a feed auger in there to kind of get the beans going into the grinder. And because of the actual design of that 78 millimeter burr, it's got more surface area than an 83 millimeter burr, which is interesting. And because it only uses two screws instead of the typical three, you're getting even more burr surface area with less area lost to those screw holes. Now in terms of flavor, the burrs offer a nice kind of middle ground for espresso that's not like the far flung high clarity SSP style, nor is it that kind of high body, high complexity style, something that you would find in like a niche zero. Like it kind of slides like right in kind of down the middle of those two types of profiles. You know, it's kind of going to give you enough flavor separation and clarity to scratch that itch, but without losing that kind of syrupy sweetness. And as far as filter goes, you know, it's going to give you some very good coffee, but it's not going to give you that high, high clarity type of coffee that you would normally find from something like an SSP. Okay. So using the grinder. Now I'll say when I got this grinder, I had a really hard time with it at first. And I want to preface this by saying I'm a big Time War fan. I love their hand grinders. They're some of my top recommendations at the price. I like their scales. I use them all the time. The 078, the normal model, you know, you see this grinder almost being universally acclaimed as one of the best in class. So I was really excited for this one. 
And then when I got it and started using it, I was really struggling with it. Like it seemed like no matter what I did, I would get massive channeling. Like it would either gush and channel or it would like totally stall out and just kind of channel and spray out everywhere. It was like nothing I did was working with it. And to be honest, it was just really hard to use. Now, depending on when you're watching this video, you might be in this situation. You may have ordered the 078S and who knows, maybe you're struggling with it in the same way that you are. And now you're scoping up reviews, trying to say, hey, did I make a huge mistake? Or, you know, what's going on with this grinder? Let me give you a couple tips that really helped me out with this grinder. Number one, it takes a huge amount of seasoning. Like I put in, you know, two kilograms worth of beans and it still wasn't behaving the way that I thought it should. I had to put in five kilograms of coffee through this grinder before I started to feel like it's responding in a way that I feel like it's getting probably close to seasoned. And to be honest, I'm still not sure that it's totally seasoned. Number two, when I was struggling with this grinder, I checked the alignment and it was not well aligned from the factory. Now, I haven't seen anybody else who has reviewed this grinder talk about this. So as far as I know, I'm the only one to get a unit that didn't come well aligned, but it had a big impact for me. So I actually took the burr assembly apart, aligned the front burr. The back burr is pretty difficult to get at, but I was able to get it to a place where I felt like, hey, this is passable alignment. And it actually did make a big difference. Still, pretty finicky, but a, definitely a lot better than it was before I aligned the grinder. So that's something you might want to check if you're kind of brave enough to do that. If you want a video on that, you can let me know too. Number three, my unit was not zero defined enough. When I got it, I like decaf. If you don't like decaf, that's fine. I really like decaf. You know, late in the afternoon, I'll drink coffee all day and all night as long as I got my decaf. I set the dial to zero and the shots were still running at like 11 to 13 seconds. So so obviously not fine enough with kind of the stock setup. So what I did, you know, you can take off the front here and you can actually move the pin and change the zero point of the grinder. So I moved it two holes counterclockwise, which moved the zero point to a finer setting and that helped. Number four, I really struggled to get good results at the upper RPM limits for this grinder. So, you know, if you had it cranked all the way up at first, it was not jiving for me. I found the sweet spot. A couple others have said this kind of straight up the middle, you know, 1100, 1000, somewhere in there was a good sweet spot for me. I started making some better coffee, but there's still some workflow kind of quirks to the grinder that kind of hinder the user experience a little bit. And again, I want to preface this by saying the grinder really does make great coffee. We'll do a taste test here in a minute. You just have to kind of get used to it a little bit. Other people have mentioned this, but you know, when you're grinding in here, if you're not using this lid, popcorning is definitely going to be an issue. You know, like beans are going to start flying out of here and go skittering across the counter. That's something that's pretty much universally reported about this grinder. And it's fine. You can use this lid. It's just another thing to kind of keep track of, you know, you set it down and you got to put it up. It's another thing you got to worry about. The hopper too is really small, which is fine. You know, for espresso, you're doing 18, 20 gram shots. The hopper can easily hold that amount. But let me tell you, when you're seasoning with five kilograms of coffee, it was really tedious <laughs> at first to put a miley. Let's just say I need a little bit of creativity. I built like a little fake hopper around it to kind of help with that process. Also bigger batches. It's not the type of grinder you're going to want to run a nice big batch brew grind through it. Now, something that I have seen other people talk about, and in my opinion, is definitely something to consider with this grinder, is the amount of usable travel when you're adjusting for espresso. You know, I find I'm like within one number set of this grinder, which is about like one centimeter of travel, you know. To put it in perspective, this morning I was using this grinder, I've been using it on my daily shots, and I moved it one tick and that resulted in a four second difference on my shot. Now that's a huge amount of difference for the amount of distance that I'm actually turning this grinder. Also, one other thing that makes those really fine adjustments kind of frustrating from a user experience is if you're standing like over the grinder and you're looking down on it because the indicator is here on the side, you can't tell exactly where your setting is. You kind of have to squeak down and look at it like you're looking down a shotgun and make this like really tiny adjustment to try and dial in 
um, your shot. So that is like a little bit of a design thing that kind of aggravates that small distance travel. Something I noticed is when you're grinding, I'll show you this in a minute, but it's got a really slow ramp up to speed when the beans are loaded. So in my opinion, it's better suited to a hot start. Problem is if you, if you pour beans in while it's running, you obviously can't use a dosing cup or you're gonna dump grinds everywhere. So you got like another thing to dose with. It's just a little bit of hassle. Retention wise, it's actually really good as long as you use the fines cleaner. At espresso settings, I was finding that without the fines cleaner, I could get up to like 1.8 grams of retention. I don't use RDT, so just know that. Um, but then as soon as you use the fines cleaner, give it a little, it goes down to like plus or minus 0.1 grams. Very acceptable amount of grinds left in the grinder. As others have said, it's very minimal. So as far as retention goes, that's fantastic. This cup is very solid, but it's also very deep and kind of narrow. So, you know, it's pretty common to get grounds kind of stuck down in there and it's difficult to get them out unless you have a long brush or you just kind of blow them out. And lastly, you know, the white base gets a little dirty, but I think that's kind of par for the course. If you're getting a white grinder with a white base right where the grinds come out, you're gonna be wiping it down a little bit more often than you might like. Now, one other thing that I have not seen people talk about, and I don't know how people are not talking about this. This grinder is a huge pain to take apart and to get in there, to clean. You know, you take this off, then you gotta unscrew this thing. Then there are six hex screws that you have to take out all of them before you can take that plate out. Then you still need to push the burr in and turn it to get the burr out. So, you know, when, when you're aligning this grinder, you're doing that every time, even just to get in and clean it compared to other grinders that you can just kind of unscrew them and take the burr out, it's a big hassle. Now, all those things being said, you get a massive burr at a very competitive price in a great looking package that makes great coffee. So, you know, I kind of have this laundry list of things about it, but it makes great coffee once you get there and it's pretty affordable. So I think what we need to do now is actually make some espresso. All right, so I got 18 grams of coffee here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do a cold start and I'm just gonna let you listen to that grinder get up to speed. And I'm just gonna see how much beans I got without using the fine cleaner. So 16.3 grams out. We'll do use the fines cleaner. And now I'm up to 18 on the dot, bang on. All right, let's make a shot. All right, let's see how we did. Mm. Okay, good. So we got great espresso. You know, I'm getting lots of separation of flavors, but still kind of that syrupy, sticky sweetness. It's a good shot. Like it's a nice middle ground of espresso, you know, it's... Mm. So we got good espresso, fantastic. Let's try some filter coffee. So to do this, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run it back to about 13. Got my pour over stuff here. Now, one thing I always do when I'm switching um, grind sizes, especially like a significant jump like this, is I'll just take a couple beans and I'll just run them through the grinder. That clears any kind of previous grinds that might still be hanging out in the fines cleaner or whatever. Now, one little trick, just while my kettle is heating up, is overdose a little bit. Like I do like a half a gram extra and I just don't use the fines cleaner until after. And that keeps a lot of those extra fines out of the grinds when you're doing filter coffee. Okay, so I've got 16.5 grams of coffee here. Just gonna put it in. Smells great. So we have 16 grams on the dot of output and I'll do the fines cleaner. It retains a little bit less at filter grind settings in there in the fines cleaner and about 0.5 grams in the fines there. All right, let's brew this up. All right, so we got a two and a half minute brew time. I'm using the Oreo V3 here. All right, let's see how we did. Mm, that is tasty filter coffee. So we got lots of clarity, good separation, nice present acidity. You know, for the price, this is really great filter coffee as well. 
think I'm gonna enjoy that. Okay, so we got some tasty filter and some great espresso out of this grinder, even if we did have some headaches on the way there. And as I was reflecting on this review, I was kind of confusing myself a little bit trying to figure out the positioning of this grinder. I mean, if you're somebody you would call yourself like an espresso file type person, you'll go to the ends of the earth to get that super clear, crisp espresso shot, you know, five kilograms of beans to season your grinder, doesn't really freak you out. And you're not really afraid to front a bunch of cash to get into that like last 10% of your espresso flavor. You know, if you're in that position, you're gonna probably trend towards the SSP burr profile. And you may even have a couple other burr sets on hand just in case you change your mood. And if that's you, this grinder's probably not gonna cut it because this burr doesn't quite have that profile. And there's not a large library of burrs that you can change it to if you get the inkling to do that. Now, on the other hand, if you're an espresso enthusiast, maybe not quite at that level where you're dropping 10G on your setup, but you still like good coffee and you're kind of looking to upgrade the grinder to where you're at to something at a little bit higher of a price point. You know, if you're in that position, if you had the experience that I did, let me just say, I think you would be very frustrated. You know, grinder alignments, that amount of seasoning, like I'm not sure that's realistic. Some people have even said it takes more seasoning than that. And that all adds up to a very frustrating experience unless you're really kind of willing to go down the rabbit hole. Now it may be that, you know, once these grinders start shipping from the factory, they're all perfectly aligned and that would have taken out a good percentage of the headache that I was dealing with. You know, if you only had to open it up, go through all that headache to clean it, that would be better. And it does produce some very tasty coffee. So that's fantastic. And it does it with a huge burr at a very competitive price. So I kind of ended up feeling like, oh, like I don't really know how to guide people here. Like I had some experience with it. It was not necessarily the most positive, but it does offer a lot on its face for the money. So here's what I would suggest. Number one, the Time More 078, it's pretty much universally regarded as one of the best grinders in its class. I would love to get my hands on one. I'm a big fan of Time More, and that grinder has kind of seen pretty much universal acclaim. If you're considering the 078S, you know, you got my experience on it. Go watch some other reviews because I think I had some hitches with it that other people didn't deal with. So give yourself a well-rounded picture of this grinder before you make your decision. You know, I can see this question coming a mile away. People are gonna ask me how this grinder compares to the Niche Duo. And to that, all I can say is, if you want me to shoot these two grinders out or see a detailed comparison video, drop a detailed question that you have and I'll gather those and put that together. As far as usability goes, I don't think you'll be surprised when I say that to just as far as the experience of using it, the Niche Duo gets my vote in that regard. Now, as far as taste profiles, for espresso, they're kind of similar in some ways, like neither one is that high clarity SSP style, nor that super thick syrupy body of the Niche Zero. They're kind of somewhere in between and I could shoot them out and give like a more detailed comparison on that. As far as filter goes, the 078 beat it for me. I prefer the filter coffee out of this by far compared to the espresso burr in the Niche Duo. And even with the filter burr in on the Duo, I prefer the filter coffee out of this grinder. So that's something that's important to consider too. The 078S is also cheaper than the Duo, so that's a big factor, but it does kind of lock you into that one burr, whereas in the Niche Duo, there's lots of other 83 millimeter burrs and there's more coming out. So it gives you more flexibility over the long term. So there's a lot of this going on with these two grinders. Now, again, if you wanna see that video, that comparison, I'll shoot them out with taste right in front of you. Give me a detailed question in the comments and I'll get working on that. I wanna hear what do you think of the 078S? Did you back this grinder on Kickstarter or are you thinking about buying it? If you pulled the trigger on it, what made you decide to do that? And I wanna know like, You've kind of got all the stuff that I dealt with. Where does that weigh in for you? Drop a comment, let me know what you think, and until next time, happy brewing.